So this is the fabled land of Shinsenkyo, the place where we will find the elixir of immortality for the Emperor. You know, I've been thinking long and hard about this, but if someone found something like that, why wouldn't they just take it from themselves? Well, if someone did that, they'd be put to death. But how would that work? They're immortal. Hmm. A battle of wits, I see. Your tongue is as sharp as the blade you used to kill countless innocents, Gabimaru. You don't know they're innocent. They might have jaywalked or committed tax evasion. But I did kill them nonetheless, so touche. Either way, you don't have to worry about me. I'm just in it to see my penis-faced wife again. That's reassuring. I'm sorry, your wife has a what on her face? Greetings, wary adventurers, and welcome to the blessed land of Shinsenkyo. I'm your guardian samurai, Grimjack, and I will guide you through the luscious forest and ancient temples in search of eternal life. Just one problem, though. You're a filthy criminal! If you don't do exactly what I say, I will chop your head right off! And trust me, it will be a hack job. You can blame a cruel god or, you know, my lack of upper body strength. Either way, it ain't my problem. That's right, today we are looking at one of the many MAPPA phenomenons and third entry in the dark triad of Shonen Jump, Hell's Paradise. If you had on your bingo card that MAPPA was going to animate all three of the trio, <laughs> guess what? You win! Collect your commemorative doily on the way out. Hell's Paradise is a bloody, brutal journey to the deepest reaches of hell. And it's got gore, suspense, and a whole lot of yeah, like a surprising amount of eh, considering the setting. Is imminent death a turn on for you? Well, great. Well, you, you're right at home. That's, you're weird. Why? We open to Gabimaru the Hollow, a sullen man on death row who is resigned to his fate. He merely walks to the gallows as they lead him towards his demise with an apathy that resembles your average person in their 30s. Once upon a time, he was a ninja from the famed Iwakakure village, growing up knowing nothing but stealth and violence. The village chief introduced him to this at a young age by killing his parents in front of him while he was still a little baby. You can't argue with that kind of efficiency. Babies have a good memory, right? Yeah, I hope so. Or, I mean, me, Ma, and Pop Pop got popped for no reason. <laughs> oh. Either way, he gets the special bloodline limit Keke Genkai no Jutsu that he, uh, well, he can't die so good. Killua Zold, I mean, uh, Grimjo the Hollow, I mean, <clears throat> Gabi Maru the Hollow, for your violent ninja backstory shenanigans and defacing the Hokage Mount Rushmore, I sentence you. All right, Swordsman Show, all you gotta do is cut this guy's head off and you get promoted to black belt! Here I go. Ah, oh, beans. So are you gonna try a ridiculous amount of other methods to kill me, or are you gonna save us both time and let me go home? Oh, we have ways of dealing with you, stenographer Bill! Invent the montage. Wait, fire a second time? It's only the third thing. We couldn't have been more creative. And why is everyone standing so close to it? Ah! Montages suck. No one should ever use this technique again. He ends up on this mess on an ill-fated mission when his comrades betray him. And he's pretty much given up on life. Despite this, he somehow survives each execution attempt without so much as a scratch. They try every trick in the book, from beheading, to immolation, to drawing and quartering, all the way to being made to sit through the entire season of X-Arm. During the process, he is interviewed by Yamada Asaiman Sigiri. She is a rather indifferent woman who is taking record of her findings. I'd like to think she's working for the local newspaper, and somewhere between the personal ads and the latest Garfield strip is gonna be this random ass story about a man who cannot be killed. Like one of those clickbait headlines. Number six will shock you and taste your taint. Back when he was a highfalutin ninja, Gabimaru was married to the village chief's daughter, a kind-hearted soul who attempted to install a sense of morality into him. He calls her dimwitted, claiming that she turned his life upside down. Hey, Gabi, 
I won't tolerate this slander of this penis face waifu. And not because I find her penis shaped face scar funny, <laughs> but because she's a good girl and she's trying her best. She has a huge penis shaped heart, Gobby. Why won't you see? Why can't you see? I love you, Gobby Maru. And I love you too, Yui. Good. That's good. Remember this love and carry it with you always. And I will- And if we're ever separated for a long period of time or I die prematurely, I don't want you to move on. Carry the pain with you for the rest of your life and use it to fuel complicated revenge schemes. Without a proper example of a healthy relationship, I can't tell if this is normal or not. So I'll assume it is! I will fill my heart with rage, penis face wife! That's a cool nickname. Say it a lot. On the final attempt, it's Sagiri herself who draws her blade to deal the final blow. It turns out she isn't just a plucky investigative journalist with a heart of gold, but a ronin executioner from Edo sent specifically to finish the job. This time, Gabi can't help but recoil from her strikes like a cat trying to avoid taking its tablets. In their discussions, Sagiri has concluded that it's actually his attachment to his penis faced wife that's keeping him alive. He's just an old softy after all. An old softy who kills everyone. Aww. So cute. There's a reason you can't die, Gabimaru. What? Spit it out! What is it? You don't want to. I bet you think this sounds really profound or something. But my heart is as hollow as the bones in my body. What? No. No, there's something wrong there. Or are you saying even though my heart is hollow, it can yet be filled by- Bones aren't hollow. Like, human bones? They got, like, marrow. You killed countless people. You don't know this? Do you think you have bird bones? The ninja school system has failed me. I can't believe it. Believe it! And now his true motives are laid bare. He had attended to leaving Iwakakure for his wife in order to live out their days as a peaceful, loving couple. Just a normal, innocent, bloodthirsty man on a wholesome, bloodthirsty mission. Hence why he was backstabbed on his last mission. Resonations in the Ninja Enterprises are unfortunately not as straightforward as you'd think. But Sagiri has an agenda of her own and comes bearing a get out of jail free card. She's got an official pardon from the Shogun that absolves him of his crimes and assures his safety from the oppressive village he attempted to leave behind. There's a catch, though. He'll have to embark on a dangerous mission to Sinchenkyo, the land on the other side, in order to track down the elixir of life. I guess if you can't take Gabumaru out in the conventional sense, she can at least take him out on a nice vacation. Though, I don't think that's what the Shogun meant when he said, take care of him, Sagiri. Girl, is this like your first day? Get your head on straight! It seems that the Shogun has begun assembling condemned criminals to set off on this journey, and only one will earn their salvation. Every research team that has embarked previously either wound up dead or became an enthusiastic bouquet. So they turn to the most desperate of souls, those who have nothing left to lose. There's one minor issue, and that is who will be selected in this exciting opportunity. There are too many candidates present, and they'll have to work out a suitable method to pare down their numbers beforehand. Hello, dangerous criminals! In the Shogun's infinite wisdom, we've accidentally invited too many of you for this suicide mission. You'll need to fight each other to the death in order for your sentences to be lifted. Why? Isn't that him? Wouldn't all those sentences be lifted if we just ganged up and killed him right now in this unfortified, loosely guarded area? The only point size usually knows is that's what's on a dagger. But I think he's got some points! Shut up and punch each other! Right, sorry, forgot what show this is. <laughs> Sagiri escorts Gabi to a beach, where he and the other criminals meet their new employer, Mr. Shogun. He's a simple and petty man, though, despite his name, at no point does he ever show a gun. Sounds awfully suspicious to me. The invitees include a who's who to every kind of lowlife you could think of. Murderers, burglars, that guy who leaked Tears of the Kingdom content. You name it, they're here. The rules are set out. They must scour the uncharted land of paradise to retrieve this elixir and return with their allocated Yamada Simon buddy alive and well. 
if any of these conditions are not met, they will receive a failing grade and be forced to attend summer school. And by that, I mean they'll get murked by the pointy end of a katana. Look guys, my days of killing people are behind me. I just want to get going and retrieve the elixir to get back together with my penis face wife. Those words, they irk me. I'm gonna kill him. Wait, isn't that Gabi Maru the Hollow? Do you have a death wish? Hey now, I got my reasons for being on death row. And those reasons are? I'm suicidal. And I'm also lazy. Oh, <laughs> right. Well then, let's go get him, Gap. He did it, my shogun. He dyed the sea red. Tell him what he's won. Oh, whoopee! That's the second thing I wanted after the elixir! If you're trying to place bets on who survives, you can rely on the try-and-true method of picking the one who looks the prettiest or most interesting. Bandit Chief Guy here, he's got a lot of scars and kind of looks like Bakugo on meth. Yeah, he should make it. Then there's the Kunoichi. She's far too marketable to get rid of this early. This concerning looking gentleman with the generic design? Maybe think twice before getting attached to him. He's probably gonna go to summer school real soon. Gabi Maru isn't really feeling it, so he tries to appeal to the Shogun's sense of reason. Expecting humanity from a politician is a fool's errand, however, so kill he must. He does so in a fashion deemed really unpleasant by most standards but it's enough to earn him a ticket on the love boat. Gabi claims one of the 10 spots to make the deadly voyage into the great unknown. Upon their arrival, they find paradise to be a luscious, flourishing land teeming with plant life and the occasional pretty butterfly that dithers along to say hello. Hello. Gabi doesn't like it a whole lot, and to make matters worse, Sagiri insists that he must obey the rule of having his hand bound the whole time. That's... Why? People are dying from this place. Why? Sagiri, get your head on straight. I'm going to cut it off and take your job. This might not sound like a big deal for a lethal ninja, but think about it for a moment. Have you ever lost your keys somewhere in the couch? It takes 12 hours to locate it as it is, let alone being restrained the whole time. How do BDSM gimps manage to get through their day? This is the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. Speaking of BDSM gimps, their discussion is interrupted when a large masked man enters the picture. He nails Gabi with a blow so hard, it snaps his head completely backwards, killing him on the spot and bringing his dreams of freedom to a crushing end. But do not cry for him! Do not cry! Because Gabi is alive after all. I guess we can add being Gumpy to his list of abilities. If we were friends, I'd call him Gumby Maru. Probably not to his face, though. Oh, wowie zowie, that was one heck of a whack. I dislocated my neck and everything. Oh, hey, Sigiri. Check this dude out. Hey, no. Get back on the ground and be dead. This is none other than Twisted Kayun. They say he loves weapons and loves killing people with them even more. No, I mean, he doesn't have to tie his hands up. Yo, Kayun, how come you get a cooler handler and I get Sigiri? Hey, I'm cool. You guys think I'm cool, right? Enough! Take me seriously, or I will be forced to test every weapon in my arsenal against your worthless body! Not hearing a yes or no, kind of starting to hurt my feelings. If you were cool, you wouldn't care, Sagiri. Mom told me that being ten feet tall would give me lots of attention. I must be doing something wrong. The perpetrator of this assault is Warped Kayun, one of the other convicts sent out to the mission to find the Elixir of Life. This hulking brute has decided that thinning out the numbers a little will give him an advantage. And plus, he just so happens to really enjoy hurting people. So it's a win-win scenario. This is the anal excavator, and I hope you can imagine how I use it to kill people. Uh, please tell me you sanitize that thing between uses. Nope. Season skillet rules, baby. Oh, why'd you lick it? That's it, get over here. Jeez, Kavimaru. You could have at least killed him on screen. Hey, the funding of the show is not infinite. It's either we skip this fight, or the finale looks like season three of The Seven Deadly Sins. Comment retracted. Kayun laps this off for a hot minute, bragging about his living armor, which appears to be made out of... hot dogs, I think. Alas, those who brag about their excellent bulletproof vests are always destined to be cut down. 
and Gobby soon turns them into a particularly large and unpleasant pincushion. Now that that's over, Kayun's assigned a Simon, lops his head off, and bags it up like a packed lunch before calling it a day. He warns Sagiri that criminals are dangerous, which shouldn't come so much as a shock, but as it turns out, there's been some especially naughty behavior. From the moment the boats landed on shore, they've been knocking each other off or making shady deals that get their way. One guy, Rokuroda, has even eaten his handler, and that is definitely against the rules of your standard field trip. Should this current batch of candidates fail, a Hattori emissary is already en route to replace them, with members of the Iwagakuri Ninja Village in tow. Gabi normally has a pretty solid poker face, but hearing about this has definitely got him a little bit rattled. Once her colleague departs, Sagiri is immediately under attack. Gabi, you treacherous swine! You weren't hollow at all, because you were full of lies! He has decided that he has to rush things to track down the elixir prior to the ninja contingent coming to mess things up. Sagiri appears to be dead weight, so he thought she should be literally dead. But wait! Neither of them seem willing to deal the final blow. Sagiri has her usual reservations about ending a life improperly, and Gabi keeps reminiscing about the lessons he'd learned from his pacifist-faced wife. No, not, not the one about wiping his feet or saying thank you when given a nice dinner, but the one about him actually having human feelings. Come on, man. You're an executioner that can't kill. You're basically pointless. Just go down! Well, you're a death row inmate who can't die, so who's useless now? Still you! Uh, why can't I land the finishing blow? Killing people is bad. Then why am I so good at it? Haha, uh! -ha, you regret your crimes! Don't push your luck. You're only the one person I can't kill. For now! Neener, neener, neener! Uh! And what happened then? Well... In Sinshinkyo, they say that the Gabi's small heart grew three sizes that day. The pair made a truce, show Overlook his outburst, and stand by his side as he fights to reclaim his freedom. Jeez, first he takes the bindings off his hands, then he tries to kill you? Sagiri, what will you let him get away with next? Staying up past his bedtime? The Scallywag! Elsewhere, fellow contestant Tamiya Gentetsusai is making his way deeper into the island. He ended up on death row due to a misunderstanding with a nobleman who was all, Hey, sword man, bet you can't cut a dragon. <laughs> Tommy had took this challenge literally and sliced his fancy dragon gate decoration in half. Boy, what's his face red? Oh, look at that little goofball. <laughs> Off the jail! Wow, Blade Dragon, you can really hold your liquor and you're incredibly strong. I bet the only thing you couldn't kill is a real life dragon. <laughs> really? You're really gonna challenge me like that, knowing my past? Behold the death of a dragon! Ah! And that's how I did felony level property damage and got the Pinkerton sicked on me. It was a rich, fool day. And that was the last weird out-of-pocket thing you ever did? Nope. I got loads more weird shit a-brewing. Strap in, Coochie, or whatever your name is. It's gonna be a wild ride. Whoopee. He's been paired up with Fuchi, a ninth-ranked Asaimon, and just a creepy little guy in general. They don't see eye-to-eye -eye on anything, but that's because Gontetsusai is two feet taller than him. Happening upon statues that are clearly man-made, Gontetsusai lets his guard down for a moment, allowing a butterfly to nip him on the hand. He decides that's super yucky and removes said head immediately. Well, it's more because he remembered the previous explorer who turned into a flower, but that's also yucky to be fair. Grotesque monsters are beginning to emerge all over the island, including this dude who has hands where his eyes should be and a fish man who looks like he was trying to attend a furry convention and got lost. Gabi can't really get a solid grip on what this thing is, and he quickly learns that it's got a few tricks up its slippery sleeve. Gabi pulls out some sweet ninja magic that must be taxing on his ninja mana supply. Gabi makes quick work of them before they cross path with Usuria and a pair of a Simon. Executioner number one is Senta, the one who was originally assigned to Usuria. He's a delightful little bundle of fluff, and I have no idea how he got his job. Maybe they just took one look at him and were like, aww, isn't he adorable? Give him rank five and a lollipop. Slap it on there. There we go, look at him. Yeah, you go on out there and get yourself killed. 
The other is Simon, Genji, was in charge of the apostate Moromachia. Once Yuzuria deceived him and used him as a human guinea pig, it was game over Red Rover. So now, Genji is just kinda sad and lonely and tagged along with this new party instead. He claims that it's because she's a significant danger, but odds are he's just kuno eating for some of that Shino booty. Hi, hi, fellow elixir seekers. This big meat mountain is Genji, the little guy is Shenta, and I'm Yuzuriha. Nice to meet ya, tee Two guards? Just how dangerous is this person? Thank you for showing up or whatever, but uh, leave now please. You're our competition. What? You'd ask widow old me to go all on my lonesome into this big dangerous forest? You have two guards. But they're not as strong and handsome as you. Won't you protect me and be my big powerful man, Uwu? Uh, that's my hand. Ah! Secret technique. Advanced hand-holding no jutsu. Okay, so she's only a threat if you think she's hot. Got it. Oop, you let your guard down. So, Gabimaru, do you think I'm hot? Ma'am, I take my marriage very seriously. Please calm your tits. But it's so hard with so little fabric covering them. You're trying too hard. Stop trying. <laughs> they strike up a deal. Gabi will provide the muscle. And in exchange, Yuzuria will bring the information and fan service. A. Nice. He still trusts her as far as he can throw her, but it seems pretty convenient enough. Also, she looks super light, and he has surprisingly powerful arms. He could probably actually throw her pretty darn far. The trust is limitless. And with their newly formed ninja bonds, they live happily ever after, I'm sure. Everyone finds the One Piece and lives forever in the paradise part of Hell's Paradise. Unlike the dead people, who probably have to stay in the hell part, I guess. At least I'm pretty sure that's what happens. But if you want to refresh your memory on the cool stuff that happens in Hell's Paradise along with me, then please interact with this video so I know what you want to see more of. If we get 5,000 likes on this video, I'll put out part two. Okay, this is Grimmy the Grim Jack Jumbler, signing out. Bye!